Morning and welcome back. Welcome back to part two of building the dry stone wall. And what a beautiful morning it is. When I first got here this morning, it was like one and a half degrees, the fog was low, a little bit cold, a little bit damp, but it's really get, starting to warm up now. It won't be long until this coat's off and we're just working in the hoodie. You won't believe it's December in two days. So when you left me yesterday, we put the foundations in, um, we've got the bottom course, the bottom lift in, using the chunkier stones, and then we got to the middle where we were putting the through stones in. Now what we're going to do, the first thing we're going to do is build between the through stones, make sure they're all in there, nice and strong, all bonded in. Um, one of my subscribers um, told me the Irish word for a through stones is called banny, I think roughly translates of bond. Um, so that bonds the wall together, really important part of the wall, well every part of the wall is important but another really important piece of the wall, the through stones. I will put a picture on the screen of a um, of the through stones where they're laid out on the wall. Um, any pictures I feel like I need to be on there with more detail, I'll stick on the screen so you can see them. Again, I'll also put the shape of what the wall needs to look like, like I did in part one, in case you want to refer back to it. Yeah, so what we're going to do now, we're going to get the um, the gloves on, we're going to build between the through stones, get them all nice and tight in, then we'll move the strings up again, um, and then we'll start doing the top course. With the top the top lift, we're using the thinner pieces of the stone, we're not using such chunky pieces of stone like we did in the bottom, which is really handy. Like I said yesterday, I've got a lot more thinner pieces of the stone than anything else here. I've been looking around for pieces of stone that have got a bit of thickness to them. So yeah, I'll get the gloves on, um, we're going to use the same tools as yesterday, and we'll start Start building some more wool. So I've just put the strings up to the final lift, that means we're just going to level all the top off now, um, get it all nice and flat ready for the coping stones. At this point now I like to sneak a few extra uh, through stones in there, the smaller ones that are on the top, so at this point it's probably about 13-14 inches wide, it'll finish about 12 inches. So I like to get a couple more through stones in here and there where I can, just adding that extra little bit of um, bond in the wall as it all settles together like we spoke about before. As it sinks in over the next couple of years, it'll really tie together. One thing you will notice, I said the summer's going to come out and it's going to get warm, it's freezing. I feel like I'm walling inside a cloud. It's really wet, it's that dewy wet. It's very, um, it's going to be very dark early today. We're not going to be working late today with the dark, not unless we get some floodlights on. Anyway, I'll. Um, get this leveled up now get some stone in and then we'll um, I'll come back to you as we're putting some coping stones on
so I've got the wall all leveled up it's leveled up nicely I'm happy with that now it's time to get some coping stones on I'd like to get them on before we go home it is going dark very quick like I said it's been like working in a cloud all day it's been that uh, foggy and misty all day so the coping stones need to be 12 inches along the bottom that's the width for the top of the wall when we put the frames up that's the width we went for so what I do this is a classic dry stone wall this tape measure it's um, full of grip doesn't close up so always there's that two foot on the end what doesn't close up so I'm roughly mark it 12 inches it needs to be nice on top roughly put it on a half moon shape on there pick which hammer you want so I've got both of them on my um, table different weight different piece of stone different hammers quickly with the table I always bring this with me this table so it's um, a table I made a few years ago now it's just nice on your back so you're not making copers on the floor on other pieces of stone if you're doing a cheek end or a corner it's nice to have something at a nice height my working height to work on um, I will be making a video probably next week maybe 10 days time about a cheek end I'm building at the end of this stretch so hit the subscribe button so you can see that and this is where the table really comes into its own being able to dress stone on there nice is good so we'll quickly shape this up Then we'll take it over and we'll get it on the wall and then we'll repeat the process 30 times until we've got that stretch finished. That's it, I'm all finished up, got it done, just put the last copers on at the end down there. It's um, what measured up at four and a half metres with the tape measure, so I've jotted that down in the book. Enjoyed that, it's been nice making the video. It's a shame about the weather, but at least it's not chucking it down, because last week it was awful. So like I said earlier, if you, uh, if you enjoyed that and you want to subscribe, hit the button now, and then you'll get notified about the next video coming up, which will be a cheek end I'll be building. Same stretch of wall, just down here, probably, what, 15 metres away. So yeah, I look forward to seeing you on that, and I'll see you all next time.